Hello everybody and welcome once again to Mechanism 110. Now, I said at the end of the last episode I was going to make start the or quintupling, which is what we're going to do. The first thing I had to do though, after having upgraded all these machines, is I needed to upgrade the other bits and pieces that went along with it. <clears throat> so here I have a pump. Now, I've already upgraded the mechanical pipes to a lead and the pump as well. So now the pump's got no fluid in, but it's at least it's got enough power and it's fully upgraded. So it's both got speed and it's got energy in there. So it's basically pumping like crazy. Oops, can't jump over that. And these, um, I've added basically replaced the solar panels for two advanced solar panels. Because if we look at this here and we go down to the power convention, uh, usage here it says it needs 400 rf per tick and it's producing it's using 400 rf per tick which is great now these they're actually using 200 and they're, they're creating 180 so that will give you 360 and i guess that the windmill is going to produce the rest over here and that also works at night so well, what's this one's producing yes it's just about producing four 40 RF a tick. So it's just about keeping up where it was. Let's have a look. So it's actually use, uh, creating 60 RF a tick. So that should be okay. But of course it's come to night time now. So it's going dark and therefore the, the solar panels aren't keeping up. And of course this will also be cooling down. But still producing a reasonable amount of... Um, brine but because there's no water we maybe need to upgrade that again i will also increase the size of this tank so it's now a volume 60 i took it up one level and took it out another layer uh, level so it's now as you can see it's basically five here three there and it's four in this direction with a big window so you can see inside it and i think that makes 60 five times three times four right so now what else did I have to upgrade in the process I had to upgrade this rotary condenser I don't think it had full speed because that's already empty on hydrogen chloride the reason for that is at least I double check that I've upgraded this completely I haven't actually put the speed upgrade into this okay let's make sure we got some uh-huh how did I do that? Oh, I just wanted to do a number nine. Right, speed upgrades. Let's put all eight speed upgrades into this and let's make sure it actually produces enough. Whatever it's producing, I've forgotten now. Hydrogen. No, it's producing this. What is it producing? It's got no gas in there. Sodium enough for. I think I've forgotten what it's producing. Never mind. Well, it should catch up. And we shall see in a second what it's actually producing. Now, at the back here, I've basically decided where I want to roughly put the machines. And it's going to be a bit tight. Because here I want hydrogen chloride gas to come into this chemical injection chamber, which is taking sulfur and producing... Uh, I don't remember what it's producing. Now, let's have a look. That's going to produce sulphur. Yes, sorry, that was what it meant at the bottom here. It produces sulphur. And then the sulphur gets uh, uh, oxidised in the chemical oxidizer here. And then that produces sulphur dioxide. And then this is also coming along here with some more oxygen. And that's producing sulphur trioxide. So somehow or other I need to get some more oxygen into this tank. I'm just wondering the best way to do it. Maybe the best thing to do here is to produce another um, gas burning generator. We'll see. And the trouble here is, of course, these things are going to basically be the line that I need for the uh, hydrogen chloride. So maybe there's not enough space. I can take this back one for certain. And I can remove this elite gas tank here, which I've been filling up with hydrogen chloride. And the idea of that was so that we could basically test this out without having to actually run the pipe for the time being. So, 
without further ado, let's get on. Now, there is one thing I've done here. Is a, the input chest I want to put actually here. So I'm moving this lot along to here again. So what we're going to have to do is basically start by moving everything out two blocks, which is actually good because then we can see what we're going to do. Or at least what I'm going to do. So we'll do the first thing. In fact, I'll even make it another block out here like that. Dig out the four blocks here so we can put the pump and some water and make sure we've got a pump. Probably haven't got a pump built yet, so we'll have to do that first. And we we'll probably need some more solar panels for the pump. And I don't know how much it's going to need to start with, so let's get along here. We've got plenty of glass we need for solar panels. We need enriched alloy, we need redstone. Uh, what else do we need? Gold. We're bound to need osmium ingots. You see, I've prepared a reasonable amount of materials. And iron ingots, I think we also need. And maybe some control circuits as well. At least we'll see. And I probably need some steel casings. At least for a pump. So let's first of all make another uh, solar panel. So I'm going to make an advanced one, so basically I want 12 of these. So I won't have enough um, items, because I've only got one of those. So we need 36 um, glass panes. 49 will be enough. To do these, what else do we need in here? Redstone and osmium ingots. Okay, that should be enough. We want 12. We can make 16. I'm just mouse scrolling these up here, control shift clicking these off, so we have enough, so it'll put the extra glass planes up there, I don't think we need those anymore. Um, we need, I think that's, yes I think that's almost all we need for those, let's go back out of here and then start the crafting recipe for, for these, so we need osmium dust as well, so we need, what have we got here? We need four of these. Oops, I made five, never mind. One extra is not going to hurt. And we also need some osmium dust to make the last part of this, I think. So those we've made, these were on the process of making. We need four of these. I don't think I did that right plus and shift click will do that. So we've got our four and then we can make the advanced solar panel fairly straight quickly. So we've got one of those. And now we need to make a pump. Very difficult to see actually, where is the pump? Ah, oh, there we are. Yes, that's where we need this casing and a bucket. What's meaning because we should have an enriched alloy we should also have. So a bucket. So now we should be able to make a pump. And we need the, the upgrades for that as well, so that's no big deal. Uh, so that's the water part of it. Let's just make sure I've probably got some more buckets in here somewhere about. Probably in the personal chest. Let's have a quick look. So I need two, and the idea of those two is to fill up some water to make the infinite water supply. Just wondering where I can get some water from. It's all quite low down these days, so there we are. Found it. Now I've actually only dug one level down, it's probably a good idea to go and do the two levels the sandstone and put the water down like that for one side and like that for the other side so now we need the pump and we'll therefore need the cables if I put the pump down there then maybe we can put the solar panel behind it, that might be a good idea. With the signs out of the way, pressurised tubing, I need the 
Basic universal cable will be fine. And I only need one, I think. So we put it down here, like that. And then we can basically put the pump on one side and the windmill, uh, the solar generator, advanced solar generator on the other. So that should. I've done that wrong, haven't I? Yes. Let's take that out of the way because it wants to come down one. That's the. Basically, I want it here, positioned here, but. I want the panel below it. Let's get some more basic pipes out of here. Basic universal cables, I mean. So now I can put the pump on here. Ah, that's rubbish. I've done it wrong, completely wrong. I don't want to do this at all, do I? I want to basically put the power down here because this is where the water is going to come out of it, or it's going to go over there. So let's put that down like that and up one. Good. Keeps wanting to put the pressurized tubes down here. So if I now click this onto that, that will then connect and it should have. Strangely enough, it's giving me what it replaces sometimes in the, in the bar. It's a bit irritating. So that's good it's got no power so we basically also want to upgrade this so let's get out the upgrades first of all I'm not going to upgrade at speed too much I'll only do two speed upgrades in fact I think I might even ignore those for the time we'll see how it goes energy is always good never lose out putting energy upgrades on there and then we can put the solar panel on this like that I think we should do fine Rotate it round, of course. So this should now have some power. It's got power and it's also producing water. And it's already full. Fantastic. So the next thing we want to do, we remove this sign now. Is we need to produce a rotary concentrator which I haven't yet produced, and that's to produce water vapour. And the water vapour, let's have a look. Here we go. The rotary condensator is one basic tank, one glass, two uh, basic control circuits, one energy tablet, which we've actually already built and a tank, so that's no big deal. So I think all I need is this. And the rest should simply click into place. Great. So, now, if I remember rightly, it does matter which way around this goes. But it won't matter too much at the moment. So what we need to do is to take some mechanical pipes out of here. I'll move the torch out of the way, don't need those just yet. Uh, basic mechanical pipes are these ones. Just take half out of there for the time being. And so we need that to come out of here like this. In fact, I'm not really happy with what I've done with the powering on this one either. So let's just move this around a bit. It looks a bit rubbish, doesn't it? Because we can basically take all of this away here like this. Work quite nicely, and be, and then rotate this round one to that side there, and then we can put the uh, where's it gone to the basic universal cable down here and up here. And then we can put that on. So we actually even save one cable. But if I want to do it properly, I'll just stand on the pump and put it down like that, and it connects the bottom straight away. Ah, uh, so. We'll just fill in these two holes here. So then we can take the, the mechanical pipe out of here like this. And as you see, it fills up straight away. So now we need this device in here. Now let's put this down first of all and have a look at the interface. So we want in here some water. 
I'm just wondering how to get some water into here. Let's have a look. Can I do it with a bucket? Maybe. Let's just take a bucket of water here. Put that into this machine here. I can't do it that way around, but I, this is concentrating. We need it the other way around. We need to deconcentrate, I think. Good question. I'm not 100% sure. So now we should be able to move this around and put it into the right place. Let's have a look at the interface again. So it comes in from the two sides. And one side it comes in and the other side it goes out. Anyway, we can't connect it up wrong now. I don't think so. But it's always difficult to know which way around things should be. We'll try it this way. It's usually the way I don't want it to be. So let's have a look. Well, it doesn't seem to have got any water in, so it probably is there for the other side. So let's turn it around. Can I turn it around with the wrench? Yes, I can. A bit weird. It's just coming from this side. Uh huh. Have I got the wrench? Has the wrench set to a funny setting? I didn't think it was into rotate mode. No, it's in wrench mode. But it won't turn it around again. Okay, so what we then do, we change the configurator to a different mode. Let's change it to wrench mode. I'm sorry, to rotate mode. Let's see if we can get it to work that way. If I'm at this side, nope. This side, nope. I d ah, right, it did actually connect. What's it done now? Still not got any water in. This behaves most peculiar, I must be honest with you. I don't understand how this thing works. Never mind, let's go back into wrench mode and push it up again. So we know which way we started with it. So that's now wrench mode. Pick it up and put it down. Of course, that's the injection chamber that's moved into its slot. And it doesn't want to connect that way. Maybe I've got this the wrong way around. Let's... Ah, yes, it did change its deconcentrating. Well, you know, it must be the right way around. Otherwise, it wouldn't connect, would it? There we go. Don't ask me what happened, because it did look as though it was connecting and just seemed to work just fine. So, what have we got here? Speed, energy. Ah, speed and energy. Okay. Let's get those upgrades done. Certainly we'll get we'll put some energy in here straight away. Even though I've got no power so far, so we will have to put some power onto that. So. Now... How am I going to do the power for this? Basically, I've got this power coming down through here. Well, I could drag that across and into here. That's probably a good way. For the time being, just to get this working, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it from the, the solar generator here, or the solar generator. So it's got some more basic universal cable. Let's put that in there. And bring that across, say, here like that that connects in and it then should be producing water vapor it is so that part is done I'm certainly not gonna have enough time to do this that so that's a bit done now so the next thing we need to do is to, to make a chemical infuser now the chemical infuser I haven't prepared I'm not preparing any of the machines so far for this episode except for one and that was the chemical injection chamber because we've already prepared one of those before and I don't think I've ever produced a chemical infuser before was it? maybe we have 
So that will be the chemical infuser. So this is one dynamic tank, two gas tanks, two control circuits, and four enriched alloys. I should have everything we need for that. We've got dynamic tank here, gas tanks here, control circuits, and enriched alloy. So let's go for that. So we now have one chemical infuser. Now let's put this down again. I've got a feeling this was the one I had most trouble with last time. So we've got empty on this side. So we want sulfur dioxide. Oh, I'm talking rubbish. We need the chemical oxidizer first, don't we? No, we don't. We need... Yes, we do. We need the chemical infuser which is the one that's going to produce the sulfuric acid. And that's actually won't do anything for a while. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. So, cause we need to do the other side now. We need the chemical injection chamber. I think that's the one I've made before. I think that was the top, the first machine we had made or on this side. And then we need a chemical oxidizer. So let's make the chemical oxidizer. And it's probably, that's chemical crystallizer. This looks like one I've not, dissolution chamber, washer, injection chamber, infuser, and of course, the oxidizer for one I didn't look at first. So that's another dynamic tank, um, basic gas tank, and a personal chest. Now I don't have a, I've got a spare um, personal chest. This one here should be empty. Let's just check. I made that one earlier on. Yes, I did. In fact, there's actually one thing that is a bit weird here. If I open up uh, this personal chest here, from, oh, no, I can't, no, you can't move other personal chests, and it doesn't matter where it is in your inventory to put it inside this. I suppose you can't have in personal chests inside personal chests. Well, that makes sense. Anyway, it was something I noticed. I wasn't sure whether it was intended or not, but that's no big deal. So a dynamic tank we have here. That's great. And what did I produce? Electrolytic separator. That's fine. I think that's all we needed, wasn't it? Two control circuits. One, yep. And one gas tank. One gas tank's fairly straightforward. Make one of those. And I think that's it. Yes, indeed it is. So this is a chemical oxidizer. Of course, this is we don't know which way around this is going to go either. So let's put it down here. Of course, it tells me it's a rotary condenser. So what's this taking as an input? So it's just taking sulfur here, which is the output from the chemical injection chamber. which is here. The chemical injection chamber is taking hydrogen chloride and gunpowder. So, okay. So what we're going to have to do is to put this down here and find out what's getting produced where. Now, do I have a spare energy cell around? No. I don't think I've got an energy cell here at all. Let's make one quickly. Actually, those are not the cell, it's this cube, isn't it? The one I want. Those are actually very high storage capacity, those energy ones. The cells, so a basic energy cell. Two, okay, that shouldn't be too difficult. Can we make two of these? We should be able to make two of those, actually. Let's have a put that down here and look for the recipe for that. Yes, we can, good. Do we need a machine frame? Got that. We've actually just got enough redstone as it happens. I've already got those ready. So there we have an energy cube. So let's go and get this filled up somewhere. We're not using too much power at the moment, so we can come over, jump over here, and put it in 
probably that's always weird you walk past the gas tank and it hits you on the head and you go, so this advanced energy cube we can is empty I'm not going to put it in there then is there so let's go and I think I've got an elite one here so let's put it into the elite one that's also empty if we run out of power and the gas burning generator is also empty brilliant why are these empty well it's got oxygen but it's not getting enough hydrogen probably run out of probably need to put some speed grades in this in this pump over here let's have a look now this has got plenty of water in well because it's night time and these solar panels aren't working properly mm. i'll tell you what we'll do i'll we'll charge it up in here we can do that too it's got a little bit of energy in here but not very much in fact yeah leave it in there for the time being let it charge up during the night or during the day that we can sleep and that'll help things out as well i could put it in here because it's always generating power um, but it's quite slow quick sleep let's make it daytime right you can walk through signs that's good now let's have a look check everything's actually working it's still empty here but it's I can hear things moving so working so that's a good sign oh yes this has got now 720 RF this is still empty so that basically means these machines somewhere or other something is using a lot of power i don't see where oh yes sorry hydrogen is now building up in here that's good very slowly mind you but it is building up this is producing lots of where is the power going to ah probably going to one of these machines over here producing the hydrogen chloride i guess Well, in fact, that's actually already now full, and this is now full. That's that's great. This is empty, and we're dumping excess excess brine. We should be dumping excess sodium. Actually, let's have a quick look. Oh, that's sodium. Oh yes, we're dumping excess sodium, that's fine. So we're producing... Alright, so we are producing chlorine slowly. So that's filling up as well, good. So that's probably that's what's happening at the moment. Probably not enough power. Let's put a bit of floor back down here. See what we're getting on with. Right. So I put into here that energy cube, didn't I? It's charging up reasonably well, good. So why did I want to do that? I have completely for oh yes I know exactly why. I'll take that out of there now and come back to those machines we're playing with. In fact I want to take what do I need to take? Gunpowder, don't I? And hydrogen chloride. Right. So let's take this hydrogen chloride out of here now. We've got basic pressurized tube, that should be enough, I think. So we're take this store of hydrogen chloride out of here put the basic pressure tube in there so it can carry on so it's basically this chemical injection chambers where we need to put stuff so let's have a look at what we can do with this let's put some power into it first of all so let's give it some power don't need much actually just for it to start the process so we know what's going on and I'll move the buckets out of the way. So we needed gunpowder and hydrogen chloride. Let's go and get some gunpowder. I probably got some from earlier on. Yes, I've got some here. Look, gunpowder. In fact, you can produce gunpowder. So let's have a look at the recipes for gunpowder. Doesn't show me. Oh, of course, I'll just do it this way around. 
So you can basically crush flint and that will produce gunpowder. And from flint you can produce that by enriching gunpowder, brilliant. Or you can purify gravel to produce flint. And gravel we can produce by enriching sand, crushing cobblestone and combining flint and, well we don't really want to do that do we since we want the flint and cobblestone to produce gravel. So those are the three ways. So what one we're obviously going to be taking is cobblestone and of course we can produce cobblestone by crushing stone or using the chisel which we don't need to do for that particular bit. So that is that. So let's put some cobblestone in and gunpowder into here and let's put into the other side some gas so we've got the gas on here now which side does look like a gas input maybe it doesn't matter actually let's have a look oh we can configure it great stuff let's go back and have a look so the gas will be none probably be the purple side so let's just put the tank down and anyway we're like then um have to do it from this side because i want it to be on facing the input to us like that anyway it's good really good noises so it's got the hydrogen chloride in here now it's producing sulfur dust which is exactly what we need it to do and of course it's going to run out of power before it gets and produces very much maybe it produces two yeah great so that's how this is going to work so let's pick this up again now and move it to where we want it to be oops shift and pick up that one too so we know we can put that on any side so that's great so the chemical injection chamber is I want it to be here I actually want it to be two blocks out from here didn't I basically in line with the pump here So let's put it down here right good so then we need the sulfur dust to come out of here and into the next machine let's remove this sign now and I'm gonna have to carry this on next time for you guys and girls to produce the chemical oxidizer do we already produce the chemical oxidizer no let's quickly go and do that before I finish the episode and I'll see you after that next time. But let's get on and just finish this off. Chemical oxidizer. Yes, we have produced it. Let's move this machine over here and see how this actually works. Because obviously it's taking sulfur. So it's not going to be problematic in terms of sides, I don't think. So we put it down here. And that looks like it's facing the wrong way. I get I guess that this is the side it takes the input. Difficult to know actually. Let's just uh, put down some mechanical logistical pipe. Have I got some with me? Yes I do, some basic. It won't need much more than basic. It doesn't produce sulfur very fast, so that's fine. Let's just put this down here and see if it's the right way around. It does look like it is the right way around. So let's make sure that this auto ejects. Sure enough it went in and it has actually produced sulfur dust. So it looks to me as though we could put the energy cube in here quickly. And let's see what that produces. Sulfur dioxide. So now I've got 200 sulfur dioxide from the two dust. Uh, so that's it. The sulfur dioxide will come, come out of here. And come into the chemical infuser. So, until next time, I'll say bye for now.